Hello. In this tutorial, I will show you how to model a poly object like a simple house. Before you start, you should have a previous knowledge about the basics of 3D Studio Max. For this, you can check my other tutorials on the webpage www.macrotutorials.com. You can use any primitive object as base for start modeling another more complex object. So, to model a house, you can start with a box. So, in the command panel, in the create tab, in the section of geometry, click on box, and create the box. You can check my other tutorial about how to create primitive objects in the webpage www.macrotutorials.com. Note this, when you have selected the box, and click on the modify tab on the command panel, you can modify the measures of the box, and other parameters. And, here appears the type of object. Box. Once you have ready the primitive object, select it. And right click over the box. In the bottom of this list, you find convert to. And, here you can convert your object to an editable mesh, an editable poly or an editable patch. Or NURBS. Each option, offers different possibilities for modeling objects. But in this tutorial I will show you this one. The editable poly. Now, if you click on the modify tab on the command panel. The type of objects is not longer box, but is editable poly. And here, appears other options different to the measures and properties of the box. Here, you can select the different sub-objects that compose the object, like the vertices, this blue points on each corner, the edges, this lines that connect the vertices, the borders. This appears when you have a hole in the object, in a moment I will tell you more about it. And, the polygons. This. Remember, a polygon is a geometrical figure composed by three or more sides. These are the polygons that compose this box. Note that when you select a sub-object this turns red. Like this. If you hold down the key control on the keyboard, and. And if clicks on another sub-object, you add sub-objects to your selection. This way you can select several objects with precision. If you hold down the key alt on the keyboard. If you click on a selected sub-object, you remove this one of your selection. This way. See. The same way you can select another sub-objects, like the vertices, edges or borders. Also, you can select the sub-objects if you click over the plus sign of left of editable poly, here. Appears this list of sub-objects, so you can select it from here or here. Well, to start modeling the house, we can create a roof. It's pretty easy. Select polygon, here. Or here. And select the polygon on the top of the box. This way. Now, we can extrude this polygon. In the command panel, roll down this menus. Here in the group of edit polygons, you find these functions, which are very useful for modeling objects. Let's try, inset. Click on the inset button, and moves over the selected polygon. When you are over the selected polygon, the mouse pointer changes. See. Now, click and hold it down. Moving the mouse has created a polygon inside this polygon. You can use measures, if you want to. At the right side of the inset button, appears this little button. Settings also appears in the other functions. If you click on it, this window appears. Here you can specify the exact amount for the inset and other options for when you have several polygons selected. Click on OK. The outline function works to change the size of the polygon keeping the proportions, so, click on it. Moves over the selected polygon. And click and hold it down, while you move the mouse. The size of the polygon is changing, but the proportion is maintained. Note this, the strange pattern on the top of the box. This happens when two polygons are on the same position. It's easy to fix this, you can move one of the polygons, or extrude it. And here is the extrude button. Left click. When the mouse pointer is over the selected polygon, it changes, like this. C. Now click and hold it down. While, move the mouse up. Or down. As you can see, the polygon is projected. This doesn't look like the roof of a house. So, we can choose vertex, on this list on the command panel. And, the vertices in the object now are visible. For these blue dots. You now can edit the vertices on the object. So, select these two vertices. This way, rolling down this menus, you find several options. And, here is the collapse button. Collapse, works to combine two or more vertices into one. As we have already selected these two vertices, clicking on Collapse, 
they becomes a to only one. C. But, exist more than a way to combine the vertices. So, roll down this menus. We find, the weld option. If you select this two vertices. Click on the right of the weld button, because we need to adjust the weld options. Appears this window, so increase the threshold amount. So, when the threshold value is bigger than the distance between the vertices, the vertices are combined. C. Now we have only one vertex. But this is not what we are looking for. We want something like a roof. So. Down here, we find the target weld. When you click on it. And if you click on a vertex and hold it down, while you move over other vertex, this way. And release the left mouse button. The two vertices become welded. But, now the roof look weird. So, in this specific case we should use the collapse function. So, right click to finalize the target weld. Click into, on the main toolbar. Here. To restore the object to a previous state. Select this two vertices. And drag this menus. And click on collapse. This vertices are now combined, now on the extremes of the house. We will make planar the extremes of the house, so select all this vertices. And, click on make planar. Now all the selected vertices are aligned in a plane, but is not what we want. Click on undo, here. And, on the right side of make planar is the X, Y, and Z buttons, to make planar the vertices in each of the axes. So, click on X. And is ready. Now, do the same at the other side. This starts to look like a house. To create a smoke stack, here is a useful trick. Enable the extras toolbar, so, right click on an empty space in other toolbar, and in this list select extras. And here is, the extras toolbar. As you know, to create any object on the scene, you have to do it over the grid. But, with the auto grid enabled you can create objects on the faces of other objects. In the extras toolbar, enable auto grid. This button, here. On the create tab. Click on shapes. Click on rectangle, and. Over the roof of the house, left click, and hold it down. And, here appears this small grid. Move it, this way. And release the left mouse button now, we have a rectangle shape perfectly aligned with the roof. Select the house. And, in the modify tab. Roll down the menus. Click on attach. And click on the rectangle that we just did. So, now the rectangle is part of the object, the house. Select polygon, here. And click on the roof. As you can see, the polygon of this side of the roof and the new rectangle are in the same position and looks weird. To fix it, select this side of the roof. And delete it, pressing the Del key on the keyboard. Now, we can see the interior of the house. As we have a hole in our model, now we can use the border selection. Select border, here. And click, here. As you can see, now I selected all the edges that compose the border of the hole. Rolling down the menu. If you click on cap, the hole is sealed. But, this is not what we want. So click on undo, here. If you select the outer border, and the border of the small rectangle. You can use the bridge tool. Remember, to select multiple subobjects must hold down the control key and to deselect any, hold down the key alt. With the two rectangles selected, click on bridge. Here. Now we've joined the rectangle to the geometry of the house. This tutorial will continue. Find the second part of this tutorial in www.macrotutorials.com.